Today, we're going to set up network-wide ad blocking with an inexpensive Raspberry Pi. Stay tuned. Today, we're going to be installing Pi-hole. It's a small, lightweight DNS server that was specifically tailored for the Raspberry Pi. Now, you can run Pi-hole on any Linux-based system. However, Pi-hole was designed to run on low-powered systems like the Raspberry Pi. Today, we're using a Raspberry Pi 3. However, I've seen people, and I think it's most common to install these things on Pi Zeros, just a $10 Raspberry Pi. So you don't have to have a lot of initial investment into this thing to get it up and going. I'd use my Pi 3 because I already had it, so I'm just repurposing it from another project to use for this. Now, I already have this one set up with Raspbian OS. I did that ahead of time. If you want to know how to get Raspbian up and going, I did a video a while back on how to set up a retro gaming system, and I go through the whole process on how to flash the SD card. I'm not going to go over it again in this one, but I will tag it in a video right here. So now, without further ado, let's get Pi-hole set up. So once you have Raspbian set up, the first thing I would do is come into Preferences here and go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. If you haven't already changed your password, I would do that now. I've already changed mine. So what you want to click on is Interfaces, and then you want to enable SSH. This is going to come in handy later. Once we do that, open the console, and there's only one command that we need to type. I'm going to type it now. So once you type the command, just hit enter, and it'll go through and find all the stuff it needs to install. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay, okay again, and again, and then we're gonna go through the configuration. Here you pick which interface you want PyHole to function off of. Obviously, we're gonna use Ethernet zero. Then we're going to pick our DNS server. You can pick Google, OpenDNS, Level 13. You can pick whichever DNS server you prefer, or you can set up a custom one. I already have OpenDNS set up, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to keep the default ad lists. I'm going to select IP4 and 6 for the protocols that it's going to filter. And then here, it wants to know if you want to use your current settings as a static IP address. You need to set up a static IP address on Pi-hole in order for other computers in the network to be able to find it. Because you have to actually point these computers to the Pi-hole. And I'm going to show you how to set that up in your router after we do this. But I don't want to use the default here. I want to set up my own static IP. So I'm going to click No. And then for my static IP, I'm going to set up 2. Default gateway is the same then hit yes and then we'll move on. And yes, we want the admin interface. Yes, we want to install a web server. Yes, we want to log queries. I'm gonna set this up to show everything, but you can change the level of privacy that you use here if you want. I'm just gonna use everything here. And then give it a second and it will go ahead and finish the installation. I'll speed this section up right here so it doesn't take so long. Okay, now that the setup is finished, you'll see the screen right here that will tell you your IP address as well as they will automatically generate you a password. However, I am never gonna remember this password, so I'm gonna show you how to change that right now. Go ahead and just hit okay, and then you wanna type in sudo pihole dash a dash p. And it's gonna ask you for a new password And there we go. That's all it takes to set up Pi-hole. Now we need to configure our network to be able to actually make use of it. So we're gonna do that right now. 
All right, now that we have PyHole set up, it's time to actually make use of it. And the way we're gonna do that is by modifying the settings in our router. However, before we do that, let's talk about how DNS works real quick and how PyHole makes use of this to our advantage. When you open your browser and you type in a web address, let's say google.com, the computer has no idea what google.com actually means. So what it has to do is go out to a name server and that name server will actually resolve Google to an IP address that corresponds with a computer on the internet. Now this has a couple of benefits. First off, if you're connecting to Google, Google has mirrors all over the world. So obviously, if you're in California, you don't want to connect to a server that's in Germany. It's simply going to take too long. Your internet's going to be too slow. So what the name server does is not only does it resolve the domain name to an IP address, but it gives you an IP address to a server that's located in a close geographical area to you. Now, the way PyHole takes advantage of this is that when you open a web page, the ads on that web page are served from different domain names. So when the web page requests an IP address to those domain names, PyHole, using a list of known advertising sites, simply blocks the request. It comes back as nothing. So what the computer thinks is it thinks that the servers aren't available, so it just loads the page without ads. This is essentially the way that host name blocking works. If you add known ad servers to your host file, then your computer simply ignores them. You just reroute them to 127.0.0.1 and it opens nothing. So in order to make this work, we have to set our router up to use the PyHole as its primary DNS server. In fact, we want to set it up to use the PyHole as our only DNS server. So that way computers can't get around the PyHole in order to get to another DNS server in order to load ads. So to do that, let me show you how. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up Chrome. And in Chrome, we want to type the IP address of the PyHole we set up earlier. So it's 192.1. 68.0.2 and then we want to click forward slash admin and this gives us our admin page now the reason why i have three queries is because i've already had a pie hole set up with the same ip address and there's probably a computer on the network that's still doing dns requests to the old pie hole so what we're going to do now is we're going to open up our router my router's IP address is 192.168.0.1. We're going to log in. I'm using DDWRT firmware on my router. Your router is going to look different. However, if you can get a DDWRT compatible router, I highly recommend it. It's a great firmware. It works really well. And some of the settings that I'm actually going to set up right now, you're not going to have available to you without something like this. So let's go through this real quick. So what we're going to want to do is on our setup menu, we want to go down and we want to find where we can specify a DNS address. So right here, I currently have it set up to open DNS. So what we're going to do is change this to 19. 1.6.8.0.2. And then what you're going to want to do is for the, the static DNS 2 and 3, what I recommend doing is just putting nonsense addresses in here so that your ISP's DNS won't actually take over. So I'm going to put 192.168.0. I'm going to put 3. And then I already have the static DNS set up as 4. Now, obviously, these two IP addresses don't even exist on the network. They're just nothing. So they'll come back as nothing. And the way that DNS works is it's not like if this IP address isn't available, it falls back on the second one. What the router will do is it will actually load balance between all your name servers so that sometimes it'll hit this one, sometimes it'll hit this one, sometimes it'll hit this one. Now, if one of those are down, it'll fail back to another one. So since both of these don't work, it's always going to fail back to the original one. So what happens is if you set up your PyHole to use its proper IP address, and then you also have your ISP's IP addresses here, then what's going to happen is every third time you connect to a web page, it's going to be getting its DNS from a different location from your PyHole, and that's not going to work with ad blocking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit save, and then we're going to hit apply. All right, now that that's set up, there's one other setting that if you have a DDWRT router, I would recommend you changing. Go into services here, scroll down to your additional DNS mask options, and then right here, type this command in, and I'll actually have 
this text right here in the description so you can type it into yours as well. But you're going to highlight the IP address here for the DNS server. And it's going to be 192.168.0.2. And then we're going to hit save and apply. And essentially what this is going to do is regardless of the DNS servers that you had set before, it's going to give the computer this IP address and this IP address only for its DNS server. If you don't have DDWRT, then this is irrelevant for you. You can just skip this part. Then the only option you have is to go into the setup menu and set static DNS servers. However, if you do have it, I recommend using this setting right here because it will actually disregard your static DNS servers and give this as the only DNS to every computer that attaches to the network. And let me show you how that works. So now that we have this set up, we're going to open up our network settings. We're going to go into our adapter settings. And then if we open up this adapter, you'll see here that the DNS server is set to open DNS right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable it and then re-enable it. What it's going to have to do is it's going to have to ask the router for all its IP information again. So now when we open this up, you'll notice that we now have our only DNS server as the pie hole. So now when we hit close, Close, we'll close all these windows here. So now when we open up the pie hole, right here it shows we have three queries. Now let's just do, um, I'm gonna do an internet speed test. And then I'm gonna go to speedtest.net. This website is usually just cluttered with ads. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our pie hole here. And as you can see, it's already blocked 19 ads and it's done a total of 131 queries. Now it's got five clients attached to it. So other computers on my network are actually already starting to attach to it. So if we look at the query log here, we can see all of the different sites that have actually been blocked. And it looks like a lot of them have been Amazon. <laughs> so there's lots of things that you can do with this. You can connect to a whitelist. So if there's any web page that this blocks that you don't want it to block, you can always add it to the whitelist. Or you have a blacklist where you can actually add websites to a blacklist if you want to do it that way. And that's all there is to setting up PyHole. Now you can always go back to your control panel if you want to change any settings or if you just want to see the stats of what's going on. Now, is it worth actually running this? Well. There's a lot of hype out there saying Pi-hole is the ultimate ad blocker. Well, I have to say that I highly disagree with that. Um, it, it's great. It really is. It's a great system. It's a neat way to make use of a Raspberry Pi, but it's got a lot of limitations, unfortunately. And some of those limitations are, in my opinion, kind of critical, unfortunately. And it's not their fault. I mean, the pie hole functions exactly how it's supposed to. And for a DNS based ad blocker, it's amazing. It works really well. But as an ad blocker in general, unfortunately, a lot of websites can easily get around it. For instance, the primary reason why I set up pie hole in the first place was to block YouTube and Hulu ads on the Roku. And unfortunately, neither of those actually work. And the problem is, is like take YouTube, for instance, on YouTube, they serve the ads from the same CDN that they serve the content from. And they use an algorithm to create multiple third level domains. And it's just a never ending game of whack-a-mole. And unfortunately, once you block an ad server, they'll end up giving content through that same server. And then you've actually blocked regular content. I set up a list that promised to block all YouTube ads. And unfortunately, all it showed was ads. And the first YouTube video I went to watch, it wouldn't load. I've just given up on trying to block YouTube ads. It's just not worth it. And in all reality, I disabled uBlock when I first set this up because I wanted to give it its all. I wanted to see exactly what this thing was all about. And it took me about an hour to re-enable uBlock and decide that browser-based ad blocking is just way better. And unfortunately, it's based on the technology. With a browser-based ad blocker, it can actually look at what's loading. It can block things based on rules as well as blocking domain names. With a DNS-based ad blocker, unfortunately, it's stuck with blocking DNS names only. That's all it can do. It can't actually look at the packets that are coming through the DNS server to see how they're actually coming together. Um, if they were able to do that, it would take a massive amount more power than a Raspberry Pi for sure. So is Pi Hole the ultimate ad blocker?
No, it's really not. Um, it's still way behind browser-based ad blockers. And unfortunately, like I said, it's not their fault. It's not what the technology was intended for. And that's just the way it is. But however, there's some great benefits to Pi-hole. If you wanna learn how DNS functions or if you wanna have more control over your network, if you wanna block Netflix so your kids can't get on Netflix over certain periods of the day, well, then you can use Pi-hole to do that. There's lots of different functions that you can use it for that are extremely helpful. And the fact that it runs on a small Raspberry Pi is just amazing. It takes up very little space and it uses very little power. So it can just sit in the corner and do its job and be ignored and simply work. The other benefit to Pi-hole is it's also a DNS cache. So when you request a domain name and it gets the response to that, it can cache that result. So the next time you go to that website, it's a lot quicker accessing the page. Your internet will actually feel snappier by using a DNS cache like this. Now, most browsers do this anyway. However, when you close the browser, and reopen it again, you have to rebuild your cache again, most of the time, depending on the browser. So even though Pi-hole didn't work out the way that I wanted it to, I do plan on leaving it on my network. It has a lot of great uses, and to be honest with you, a lot of the benefits I didn't even really consider before setting it up, so I do plan on leaving it on my network. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Have a great day.